Hello friends and welcome to our second brew day video. Today we're going to be making a Mocktoberfest. I wanted a kind of an Oktoberfest in preparation for September when you've got a taste for those kinds of beers, but I don't want to take the time to lager it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use similar ingredients to an Oktoberfest, but I'm going to turn up the volume, as Josh Weikert says. He was my inspiration. He did an article online uh, about this Mocktoberfest. But what he said is you want to turn up the ingredients to hide some of those fruity esters you're going to get from the ale yeast. So we're going to amp up the malty bready flavors in this Mocktoberfest. Uh, so we've got a little different recipe, which you'll see later on in the video. I'm excited for this one. We'll see how it turns out. We're gonna add all of our grains into the mash tun. See, we've got four and a half pounds of light Munich, four and a half pounds of mild ale malt, 12 ounces of care Munich, and four ounces of melanoidin. Hopefully these two are gonna help give us sort of that biscuity malty flavor that we want in this beer. Here's the beginning of our starter. Our recipe called for Y yeast 1056, but I forgot to order it. Luckily, I've got some packs of US 05 on hand and they're both the same strain of yeast, the Chico strand, so this should work just as well. We are just starting to bring up the temperature on our water for the mash, our hot liquor, if you will. We want this to be about 156 to 160 degrees, and then when we add it to the mash, it'll be around 145 degrees. Now that's at the lower end of where you want the mash to be, and that's because we want a thinner bodied beer. Now we're transferring the hot water into the mash tun where we already have the grains. If we hit the right temperature, it'll activate those enzymes and they will start breaking down the starches into sugars that the yeast will be able to consume and make some alcohol. Now we're transferring the wort from the mash tun into the boil kettle. We've moved most of the wort over to the boil kettle. There's a little bit left, the grains are still wet, so we've suspended them over the mash tun, and we're gonna let those drip and get that last bit of sweet wort out of there into the boil kettle for our beer. We've got a nice boil started, so we're gonna add our 60 minute hop addition. We've got a third of an ounce of Columbus, and this is strong stuff. It's a 17% alpha acid, so that'll put us up about uh, 20 IBUs. Here we go. We've got 20 minutes left on the boil, so we're going to add a full ounce of Hallertau Mittelfru to get that nice German hops character into our Mocktoberfest. Whirl flock tablet going in. Let's see what happens if we put it in whole. We're cooling the wort now. When we brewed the Belgian pale, we found that using the groundwater, we weren't quite able to get down to pitching temp. So I plan to do the same thing I did then. I'm going to cool down as far as I can with the groundwater, and then I'm going to put it in my. Uh, freezer down in the basement. I've got an ink bird on there and I'm gonna bring it down to about 63, 64 degrees and then probably pitch tomorrow morning. Now we're transferring from the boil kettle to our fermentation bucket and then we're gonna take it down to the freezer and bring it down the last few degrees to get to our pitching temperature. We've made it down to the basement so here's our wort here in the fridge, the freezer, and we're going to use the freezer to bring it down the last few degrees to our pitching temp, and we'll pitch tomorrow morning, pitch the yeast. What you see here 
This is the Inkbird temperature controller. And what that does is it overrides the temperature controller in the freezer, allowing you to set the freezer at a very specific temperature. I've got a probe attached to this. This is the Inkbird probe. And then that is on the side of the fermenting bucket. So that'll give us an idea of what the temperature is within the bucket. And then the controller will adjust the temperature within the freezer so that we reach our desired set temperature. We also have another thing in here. We've got a little fan, and that's to help keep the air moving around, uh, keeps the temperature consistent, also helps to prevent the development of mold in the freezer. Good morning, friends. It's the next day. Uh, checking on our wort here. Looking good. We're at pitching temperature. So we're going to go get the yeast from the stir plate and we're going to pitch US05 into this Mocktoberfest wort. So I just took a gravity reading. Uh, looks like we're about 1046, 1048. It's a little hard to tell looking down into the bucket exactly what it was, but that's right about on target. And now we're going to pitch our yeast. And try not to lose the stir bar this time. Perfect. So we'll close this up. We'll let it ferment. And we'll come back in a couple weeks, see what we've got. This is always a welcome sight. It's been 33 hours or so since we pitched the yeast. And our airlock is happily bubbling away, which means the yeast is doing what we want in there. And fermentation is well underway. Welcome back, friends. It's been about six days since we brewed the Oktoberfest. And it looks like fermentation is about complete. What I plan to do is let it go a full two weeks uh, at 64 degrees, and then I'm gonna cold crash it for a week. And I wanna experiment with this batch. I've never used gelatin finings before. So we're gonna try gelatin finings and see what happens. Maybe it'll become something we use on a lot more batches after this. I hope you like the content we've been putting up. Uh, if you have any suggestions, things you want to see, let me know. Put it in the comments. Uh, send me an email. That'd be great. Uh, and we'll put another video up soon about gelatin findings. Also, look forward to a video on Belgian beers with my friend Amy, who has actually had the chance to visit Belgium and taste them in their natural habitat. So, if you enjoy what you see, like subscribe. We'll see you later, friends.